I always wanted to go camping in Wyoming, the best state for camping. I had read about the stunning scenery, the abundant wildlife, and the wide open spaces. I decided to rent a solo cabin at Canopolis Lake State Park, a place that offered hiking trails, fishing, and boating. It sounded like the perfect getaway from my stressful life in the city. I arrived at the park on a sunny afternoon and checked in at the ranger station. The ranger gave me a map and directions to my cabin, which was located at the far end of the park, near the lake. He also warned me to be careful of bears and mountain lions, and to keep my food in a secure container. I thanked him and drove to my cabin, eager to start my adventure. The cabin was small but cozy, with a wooden porch, a fireplace, and a kitchenette. It had a single bed, a table, and a chair. There was no electricity or running water, but there was a lantern, a battery-operated radio, and a bucket of water. I unpacked my things and settled in, feeling a sense of peace and tranquility. I decided to go for a hike before sunset, so I grabbed my backpack, my water bottle, and my camera. I locked the cabin door and followed a trail that led to the lake. The trail was easy and scenic, with views of the rolling hills, the forest, and the water. I saw some deer, some rabbits, and some birds along the way. I took some pictures and enjoyed the fresh air and the silence. I reached the lake after about an hour and sat on a rock near the shore. The lake was calm and clear, reflecting the sky and the mountains. I felt a surge of awe and gratitude, and wondered why I had waited so long to do this. I decided to stay there for a while, watching the sunset and the stars come out. I lost track of time and realized it was getting dark. I checked my watch and saw that it was almost 9 p.m. I decided to head back to the cabin, hoping to make a fire and cook some dinner. I got up and started to walk back, following the trail with the help of my flashlight. That's when I heard it. A low growl, coming from behind me. I turned around and saw a large, dark shape in the shadows. It was a mountain lion, and it looked hungry and angry. It bared its teeth and snarled, preparing to pounce. I panicked and ran, dropping my backpack and my camera. I knew I had no chance of outrunning it, but I had no other option. I sprinted as fast as I could, hoping to reach the cabin before it caught me. I heard it behind me, getting closer and closer. I felt its breath on my neck, its claws on my back, its teeth on my shoulder. I screamed and fell to the ground, feeling a sharp pain and a warm blood. I thought I was going to die, but then I heard a gunshot. The mountain lion let go of me and ran away, yowling in pain. I looked up and saw the ranger, holding a rifle. He had heard my scream and came to help me. He ran to me and checked my wounds, calling for backup on his radio. He told me I was going to be okay, that he had scared off the animal, that help was on the way. After a few seconds, I passed out and woke up in a hospital bed and was being treated for everything. This was a really scary experience for me. I always wanted to go camping, but I never had the chance until last summer. I decided to rent a solo cabin near Canopolis Lake State Park in Kansas, one of the best states for camping. The cabin was small and cozy, with a fireplace, a kitchenette, and a bathroom. It was surrounded by trees and had a view of the lake. I thought it was the perfect place to relax and enjoy nature. The first day was great. I explored the park, which had a reservoir, a prairie dog town, and some sandstone canyons, carrot one carrot one. I saw some wildlife, like deer, rabbits, and birds. I even caught a fish in the lake and cooked it for dinner. I felt happy and peaceful. The second day was when things started to get weird. I woke up to a loud thud outside my cabin. I looked out the window and saw a large dent in the door. It looked like someone or something had tried to break in. I grabbed a knife from the kitchen and opened the door cautiously. There was no one there, just some footprints in the dirt. They were too big to be human, and had claws at the end of each toe. I felt a chill run down my spine. I decided to call the cabin owner and ask him what was going on. I picked up my phone, but there was no signal. I remembered that the owner had told me that the reception was spotty in the area, 
and that I should use the landline in the cabin if I needed to contact him. I went back inside and looked for the phone. I found it on a table, but it was smashed to pieces. The cord was cut and the handset was cracked. I felt a surge of panic. I realized that I was not alone and that something was hunting me. I wondered if it was a bear, a wolf, or something else. I wondered why it wanted me and what it would do to me if it caught me. I wondered if I could escape or if I was doomed. I decided to try to make a run for it. I packed my backpack with some essentials, like water, food, and a flashlight. I put on my jacket and shoes and headed for the door. I hoped that the creature was not nearby and that I could reach my car, which was parked a few hundred feet away from the cabin. I opened the door and stepped outside. The sun was setting and the shadows were growing longer. I looked around but saw no sign of the creature. I breathed a sigh of relief and started to walk towards my car. I was halfway there when I heard a roar behind me. I turned around and saw the creature. It was huge, hairy, and muscular. It had a snout, fangs, and horns. It had red eyes and blood dripping from its mouth. It looked like a demon from hell. It charged at me, faster than I could run. I dropped my backpack and ran for my life. I reached my car and fumbled with the keys. I unlocked the door and got in. I slammed the door and locked it. I started the engine and put it in reverse. I looked in the rearview mirror and saw the creature. It was right behind me, clawing at the trunk. I stepped on the gas and backed up. I hit the creature with a thud. It let out a scream and fell to the ground. I turned the car around and drove away as fast as I could. I didn't stop until I reached the nearest town. I found a motel and checked in. I called the police and told them what had happened. They said they would send someone to investigate. I asked them if they knew what the creature was. They said they had no idea, but that there had been some reports of strange sightings in the area. They said they would keep me updated, but they never contacted me again. I wanted to go camping in Colorado, so when I saw an online ad for a solo cabin rental in the Rocky Mountains, I didn't hesitate to book it. The cabin was located in a secluded area near Canopolis Lake State Park, which had over 30 miles of hiking trails and scenic sandstone canyons. It sounded like the perfect place to relax and enjoy nature. I arrived at the cabin on a sunny afternoon in late October. The cabin was small but cozy, with a wooden porch a fireplace, and a kitchenette. It was surrounded by pine trees and had a view of the lake. I unpacked my bags and decided to explore the area before it got dark. I followed a trail that led me to the edge of the lake, where I saw a small boat docked. There was a sign that said, Boat rental $10 per hour. I thought it would be fun to take a ride on the lake, so I grabbed a life jacket and a paddle and got on the boat. I pushed off from the dock and started to row. The lake was calm and quiet, except for the occasional splash of a fish or the cry of a bird. I felt a sense of peace and freedom as I glided over the water. I looked around and admired the beauty of the landscape. The sun was setting behind the mountains, painting the sky in shades of orange and purple. I decided to head back to the cabin before it got too dark. I turned the boat around and started to row in the opposite direction, but as I did, I noticed something strange. The cabin was gone. I blinked and rubbed my eyes, thinking I was seeing things. But no matter how hard I looked, I couldn't see the cabin anywhere. It was as if it had vanished into thin air. I felt a surge of panic and confusion. How could this be possible? Where did the cabin go? Did I take a wrong turn? I checked my phone, but it had no signal. I had no map, no compass, no flashlight. I was alone on the lake, in the dark, with no idea where I was or what to do. I tried to calm myself down and think rationally. Maybe I had just missed the cabin somehow. Maybe it was hidden behind some trees or rocks. Maybe I just needed to row a little further and I would see it. I decided to keep rowing along the shore, hoping to find the cabin or any sign of civilization. But as I rowed, I realized that something else was wrong. 
The lake was not the same as before. It was darker, deeper, colder. The water was murky and smelled foul. The trees were twisted and bare. The birds were silent. The sky was black. I felt a chill run down my spine. I had a terrible feeling that I was not in the same place anymore. I had somehow entered a different world. A world that was hostile and dangerous. A world that wanted me gone. I started to row faster, desperate to get out of there. But then I heard a sound that made my blood run cold. A low, guttural growl, coming from behind me. I turned my head and saw a pair of glowing red eyes staring at me from the water. They belonged to a huge, black creature, with scales, claws, and teeth. It looked like a cross between a crocodile and a dragon. It was the most terrifying thing I had ever seen. It opened its mouth and let out a roar then, something unexpected happened. The creature stopped. It stood there and stared at me for a few seconds, and I stared at it. It looked at me with a curious expression, as if it was puzzled by me. It tilted its head and made a low, rumbling sound. I didn't know what it was doing. I didn't know what it wanted. I was too scared and hurt to move. I just stared at it, hoping it would leave me alone. And then it did. It turned around and swam away, disappearing into the depths of the lake. It left me alone, bleeding and gasping for air. I didn't understand why it spared me. Maybe it had enough of me. Maybe it sensed something in me. Maybe it was just bored. I didn't care. I was just glad it was gone. I managed to swim back to the surface, where I saw the boat floating nearby. I grabbed it and climbed in, feeling a wave of relief. I looked at the shore, where I saw the cabin. It was there, just as I had left it. It was real. I paddled towards it, hoping to reach it before I passed out. I didn't know if I would survive. I didn't know if anyone would find me. I didn't know if I would ever get out of this nightmare. But I knew one thing. I would never go camping again. The End I had always wanted to go camping in Wyoming, the best state in America for camping. I had heard so much about the stunning scenery, the abundant wildlife, and the peaceful solitude. So when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental near Canopolis Lake State Park, I didn't hesitate to book it. It was a solo trip, just me and nature, no distractions, no worries. The cabin was small but cozy, with a fireplace, a kitchenette, and a bed. It was located on a hill overlooking the lake, surrounded by pine trees and wildflowers. I arrived in the afternoon, unpacked my stuff, and decided to explore the area. The campsite was not too crowded, but I saw a few other campers setting up their tents or grilling their food. I waved hello to them and continued on my way. I followed a trail that led me to the edge of the lake, where I saw a wooden dock and a rowboat. I thought it would be fun to take a ride on the water, so I got in the boat and started rowing. The lake was calm and clear, reflecting the blue sky and the green hills. I felt the breeze on my face and a smile on my lips. This was exactly what I needed, I thought. I rode for about an hour, enjoying the view and the silence. I saw some fish jumping out of the water, some birds flying overhead, and some deer drinking from the shore. I felt a connection with nature, a sense of awe and gratitude. I decided to head back to the cabin before it got dark, so I turned the boat around and rowed back to the dock. As I approached the dock, I noticed something odd. There was another boat tied to it, a red one, with a fishing rod and a cooler in it. I didn't see anyone around, and I wondered who it belonged to. Maybe someone had gone for a hike and left their boat there, I thought. I shrugged and tied my boat next to the red one, then got out and walked back to the cabin. When I got to the cabin, I saw another strange thing. The door was slightly ajar, and I could see a light inside. I was sure I had locked the door and turned off the lights when I left. I felt a surge of fear and anger. Someone had broken into my cabin, I thought. I grabbed a stick from the ground and cautiously approached the door. I pushed it open and stepped inside. The cabin was a mess. My stuff was scattered all over the floor, my bed was torn apart, and my food was gone. I saw a backpack and a jacket that were not mine, lying on the couch. 
I heard a noise from the bathroom, a sound of running water. I realized there was someone in there, someone who had invaded my space and ruined my trip. I clenched my teeth and raised my stick, ready to confront them. I walked to the bathroom door and kicked it open. I saw a man standing in the shower, naked and wet, with a knife in his hand. He looked at me with a wild and crazy expression, and he smiled. He said, Hello, neighbor. I've been waiting for you. He lunged at me with the knife, and I swung my stick at him. We fought for a few seconds, but I was not going to give up. I kept punching him in the face, and he dropped the knife. I grabbed it and pointed it at him. Then, all of a sudden, he turned around and ran out of the bathroom, leaving me alone. I didn't waste any time. I packed up my stuff, ignoring the pain and the mess. I got in my car and drove away as fast as I could. I didn't look back, I didn't care about anything. I just wanted to get away from that cabin, from that lake, from that man. I hoped he would never find me again. I wanted to go camping in the wilderness, away from the noise and stress of the city. I decided to rent a solo cabin in Kannapolis Lake State Park, one of the best places for camping in Kansas. The park had a reservoir, desert plants, a prairie dog town, and scenic sandstone canyons. It sounded like the perfect spot for some adventure and relaxation. I arrived at the park on a sunny afternoon and checked in at the visitor center. The ranger gave me a map and directions to my cabin, which was located in a secluded area near the lake. He also warned me to be careful of the wildlife, especially the coyotes and rattlesnakes. I thanked him and drove to my cabin, eager to explore the park. The cabin was small but cozy, with a bed, a fireplace, a kitchenette, and a bathroom. It had a wooden porch with a rocking chair and a view of the lake. I unpacked my stuff and settled in, feeling happy and peaceful. I decided to go for a hike before it got dark, so I grabbed my backpack, water bottle, and camera and headed out. I followed a trail that led me to the edge of the lake, where I saw a flock of geese swimming and honking. I took some pictures and continued along the shore, admiring the beauty of nature. I saw a sign that pointed to a loop trail that went through the canyons, and I decided to take it. It looked like a fun and challenging route. The trail was narrow and rocky, with steep slopes and sharp turns. I had to watch my step and balance carefully, but I enjoyed the thrill of the hike. The canyons were amazing, with red and orange walls that contrasted with the blue sky. I felt like I was in another world, far away from civilization. I was so absorbed in the scenery that I didn't notice how long I had been hiking. I checked my watch and realized that it was almost sunset. I had to hurry back to my cabin before it got dark. I quickened my pace and tried to find the way out of the canyons, but I soon realized that I was lost. I had taken a wrong turn somewhere and ended up in a dead end. I panicked and looked for another trail, but there was none. I was trapped. I took out my phone and tried to call for help, but there was no signal. I cursed and looked around, hoping to find a way out. I saw a small opening in the canyon wall, like a cave entrance. I thought that maybe it led to another trail, or at least a place to shelter for the night. I had no other choice, so I decided to enter the cave. I turned on my flashlight and stepped into the dark hole. The cave was narrow and damp, with a musty smell. I had to crouch and crawl to move forward, scraping my knees and elbows on the rough rocks. I hoped that the cave would end soon, but it seemed to go on forever. I started to feel claustrophobic and scared. I heard a noise behind me, like a hiss. I turned around and saw a pair of glowing eyes staring at me. It was a rattlesnake, coiled and ready to strike. I screamed and jumped back, but I hit my head on the ceiling and fell to the ground. I dropped my flashlight and it rolled away, leaving me in the dark. I felt the snake bite my leg, injecting its venom into my veins, and I fell to the ground. As I lay on the ground, feeling the venom coursing through my body, I thought I was going to die. But then, I saw a flicker of light in the distance. It was my flashlight, rolling down the cave. I gathered all my strength and crawled towards it, hoping to find a way out. 
I reached the flashlight and turned it on. I scanned the cave, looking for the snake that bit me. But instead of the snake, I saw something else. Something much worse. It was a dark shape, like a shadow, but with a solid form. It had white glowing eyes that pierced the darkness, and a mouth full of sharp teeth. It looked like a creature from a nightmare, and it was staring right at me. I froze in terror, unable to move or scream. The creature moved closer, slowly and silently. It seemed to be curious about me, or maybe hungry. It reached out a clawed hand and touched my leg, where the snake bite was. I felt a jolt of pain, and then a strange sensation. It was like the creature was sucking the venom out of me, along with my blood and life force. I felt myself getting weaker and weaker, as the creature drained me of everything. I wanted to fight back, but I had no energy left. I felt myself fading away, losing consciousness. But then, something happened. The creature suddenly let go of me and recoiled. It made a horrible noise, like a scream of agony. It looked at me with a mix of fear and anger, and then it disappeared. It vanished into thin air, leaving no trace behind. I didn't understand what happened, but I didn't care. I was still alive, and I had a chance to escape. I grabbed my flashlight and ran out of the cave, as fast as I could. I didn't stop until I reached my car, which was parked near the cabin. I got in and drove away from there, never looking back. I don't know what that creature was, or why it attacked me. I don't know why it left me alone, or where it went. I don't know if I'll ever find out the answers. But I do know one thing. I'm never going camping again. I always wanted to go camping in Colorado, the best state of America for camping. I had heard so much about its natural beauty, rugged mountains, and breathtaking landscape. So when I found a cheap deal online for a solo cabin rental at High Plains Camping, I didn't hesitate to book it. The campsite was located in Oakley, a small town in the western part of the state. It had 70 RV sites, 12 cabins, and a few tent sites. It also had facilities like a pool, a playground, a laundry room, and a store. It seemed like a perfect place to relax and enjoy nature. I arrived at the campsite on a sunny afternoon in late September. The owner greeted me warmly and gave me the key to my cabin. He said it was one of the oldest cabins on the site, but it had been renovated recently and had all the amenities I needed. He also warned me that the nights could get cold and windy, so I should keep the windows and doors locked. I thanked him and drove to my cabin. It was a small wooden structure with a porch, a living room, a kitchen, a bedroom, and a bathroom. It looked cozy and comfortable. I unpacked my bags and decided to explore the campsite. I walked around and saw a few other campers, mostly families and couples. They smiled and waved at me as I passed by. I also saw some wildlife, like squirrels, rabbits, and birds. I felt a sense of peace and happiness. I returned to my cabin as the sun was setting. I made myself some dinner and watched some TV. I felt a bit lonely, but I reminded myself that this was a chance to reconnect with myself and nature. I decided to go to bed early and get some rest. I woke up in the middle of the night to a loud noise. It sounded like something was banging on the door. I jumped out of bed and grabbed a flashlight. I looked through the peephole and saw a dark figure outside. It was wearing a hooded cloak and holding a large axe. It was trying to break into my cabin. I felt a surge of fear and panic. I quickly locked the door and dialed 911, but there was no signal. I realized I was trapped and alone. I heard the door splintering and cracking. The figure was getting closer. I ran to the bathroom and locked myself in. I hoped that the door would hold long enough for someone to come and help me. I heard the figure enter the cabin. It was walking slowly and heavily. It was dragging the axe on the floor. It was looking for me. I heard it knock on the bedroom door. Then the living room door. Then the kitchen door. It was getting closer. I crouched in the corner of the bathroom and prayed. I hoped that it was a prank or a nightmare. I hoped that it would go away. I hoped that I would survive. I heard it knock on the bathroom door. It was here. 
I decided to make a run for it and open the door. I expected to see the hooded figure with the axe, but there was nothing there. The cabin was empty and silent. I felt a wave of relief and confusion. To this day, I still don't know if it was all my imagination or something else. I wanted to go camping in the wilderness, away from the noise and stress of the city. That's why I rented a cabin in the Yosemite National Park in California, one of the best states of America for nature lovers. The cabin was located in a secluded area, surrounded by tall pine trees and a clear stream. It was cozy and rustic, with a fireplace, a kitchen, and a bedroom. I thought it was the perfect place to relax and enjoy the beauty of nature. I arrived at the cabin in the afternoon, after driving for several hours from San Francisco. I unpacked my car, lit a fire, and made some coffee. I decided to explore the area a bit, so I grabbed my camera and walked along the stream. The scenery was breathtaking, with snow-capped mountains, green meadows, and colorful wildflowers. I took some pictures and admired the view. I felt peaceful and happy. As the sun began to set, I headed back to the cabin. I cooked some dinner, read a book, and watched the stars. I felt sleepy and decided to go to bed. I locked the door, turned off the lights, and crawled into the warm bed. I fell asleep quickly, dreaming of the next day. I woke up in the middle of the night, feeling a cold breeze on my face. I would opened my eyes and saw that the window was open. I wondered how that happened, since I was sure I closed it before going to bed. I got up and walked towards the window, intending to close it. As I approached, I saw something that made my blood run cold. There was a man standing outside the window, staring at me with a twisted smile. He was wearing a dirty coat, a hat, and a mask. He had a knife in his hand, dripping with blood. He looked like a serial killer from a horror movie. He raised his hand and tapped on the glass, making a chilling sound. I screamed and ran to the door, hoping to escape. But the door was locked, and the key was missing. I looked around, panicking, and saw that the key was on the table, next to a note. The note read, Hello, friend. I hope you enjoyed your stay. I've been watching you for a while, and I must say, you are very interesting. See you in a bit. I felt a surge of terror and disbelief. This was a nightmare, it had to be. How could this happen to me? Why me? Who was this man, and what did he want from me? I looked for a weapon, anything to defend myself, but there was nothing. I was trapped, alone, and helpless. I heard the doorknob turn, and the door opened slowly. The man entered the cabin, still smiling. He walked towards me, holding the knife. I backed away, until I hit the wall. There was nowhere to go. He was right in front of me, ready to strike. He said, Goodbye, friend. It's been a pleasure. Don't worry, it will be over soon. Just close your eyes and let it happen. Trust me, it's for the best. He raised the knife and brought it down. I woke up, gasping for air. I was in my bed, in the cabin. It was morning, and the sun was shining. It was all a dream, a horrible, terrible dream. I was alive and safe. There was no killer, no note, no knife. It was all in my head, a product of my imagination. I sighed with relief and wiped the sweat from my forehead. I got up and went to the bathroom. I splashed some water on my face and looked in the mirror and saw something that made my heart stop. There was a red mark on my chest where the knife had stabbed me in my dream. This was really scary. I haven't experienced anything like that again. But I still wonder, how did I got that mark on my chest? I wanted to go camping in Colorado, the best state of America for camping. I had heard so much about the natural beauty, the rugged mountains, and the breathtaking landscape. So when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental near High Plains Camping, one of the top campgrounds in the state, I didn't hesitate to book it. I drove for hours from Denver, enjoying the scenic views along the way. I arrived at the campground in the late afternoon 
and checked in at the office. The friendly staff gave me a map and directions to my cabin, which was located at the edge of the property, surrounded by trees and hills. They also warned me about the wildlife in the area and advised me to keep my food and trash secure. I followed the dirt road to my cabin, which was a small wooden structure with a porch and a swing. It looked cozy and rustic, just what I had imagined. I unloaded my car and entered the cabin. It had a living room with a fireplace, a kitchenette, a bathroom, and a bedroom with a full bed and a bunk bed. It was simple but comfortable, and had everything I needed for a relaxing stay. I decided to explore the campground before it got dark. I put on my hiking boots and grabbed my backpack, and headed out. The campground was spacious and well-maintained, with a variety of facilities and amenities. There were RV sites, tent sites, and cabins, as well as a playground, a pool, a laundry room, and a store. There were also trails that led to the nearby national forest, where I could enjoy more hiking and biking. I chose one of the trails and followed it into the woods. The air was fresh and crisp, and the sun was shining through the branches. I felt a surge of energy and excitement as I walked among the pine trees and wildflowers. I saw some squirrels and birds, but no other people. I felt like I had the whole forest to myself. I walked for about an hour, until I reached a clearing with a stunning view of the mountains. I stopped and took some pictures, and then sat down on a rock to rest and snack. I checked my phone and saw that I had no signal. I didn't mind, though. I was enjoying the solitude and the silence. I was about to get up and head back when I heard a rustling sound behind me. I turned around and saw a large black bear standing on its hind legs, about twenty feet away from me. It was staring at me with its dark eyes and sniffing the air. It must have smelled my food. I felt a surge of fear and panic as I remembered the staff's warning. I had read somewhere that you should never run from a bear, but try to scare it away by making noise and appearing bigger. I quickly grabbed my backpack and held it over my head and started yelling and waving my arms. I hoped the bear would get scared and leave, but it didn't. It lowered itself to all fours and started walking towards me, slowly and steadily. It looked angry and hungry and ready to attack. I realized that I had made a mistake. I had provoked the bear instead of deterring it. I had no chance of fighting it off or outrunning it. I was doomed. I dropped my backpack and ran, hoping to find a way out. I ran as fast as I could, dodging the trees and rocks. I heard the bear behind me, gaining on me. I felt its hot breath on my neck, and its claws on my back. I screamed and fell to the ground, feeling its teeth on my leg. I thought it was the end, but then I heard a gunshot. The bear let go of me and roared, and then collapsed on top of me. I felt its weight crushing me, and its blood soaking me. I tried to push it off, but I couldn't. I was trapped. I heard another gunshot, and then footsteps. I saw a man with a rifle, wearing a ranger's uniform. He came over and lifted the bear off me, and checked my pulse. He looked relieved and said, You're alive. You're lucky I was nearby. I heard your scream and came to help. You're badly injured, but you'll make it. I'll call for help and get you to a hospital. Don't worry, you'll be okay. He took out his radio and called for backup and an ambulance, and then stayed with me until they arrived. When the help arrived, they took me to the hospital, and I somehow survived. This was the closest I had ever come to dying. I wanted to go camping in the woods, so when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental in Yosemite National Park, I didn't hesitate to book it. It was supposed to be a relaxing getaway from the stress of my job and the city life. I packed my car with some essentials and drove for six hours to reach the campsite. The cabin was located in a secluded area, surrounded by tall pine trees and a small lake. It looked cozy and rustic, with a wooden porch and a stone chimney. I got the key from a lockbox and entered the cabin. It had a living room with a fireplace, a kitchen, a bathroom, and a bedroom. It was furnished with simple but comfortable furniture and had some paintings and books on the shelves. 
I felt a wave of peace and happiness wash over me as I unpacked my bags and settled in. I decided to explore the campsite a bit before it got dark. I put on my jacket and boots and grabbed a flashlight and a map. I locked the cabin door and walked along a dirt trail that led to the lake. The air was crisp and fresh, and I could hear the sounds of birds and insects. I reached the lake and admired the view. The water was clear and calm, reflecting the blue sky and the clouds. I saw some ducks and fish swimming in the lake. I felt a connection with nature and smiled. I walked around the lake for a while, enjoying the scenery and the solitude. I didn't see any other campers or cabins nearby. I felt like I had the whole place to myself. I checked my watch and saw that it was almost 6 p.m. I decided to head back to the cabin and make some dinner. I followed the trail back to the cabin, humming a tune. As I approached the cabin, I noticed something odd. The door was slightly ajar. I frowned and quickened my pace. I reached the cabin and pushed the door open. I gasped and dropped my flashlight. The cabin was a mess. The furniture was overturned, the books and paintings were scattered on the floor, and the fireplace was lit with a roaring fire. I felt a surge of fear and anger. Who did this? How did they get in? I looked around for any signs of the intruder, but I didn't see anyone. I grabbed a kitchen knife and cautiously entered the bedroom. The bed was unmade, and there was a note on the pillow. It read, Hello, friend. I hope you don't mind me borrowing your cabin for a while. Don't worry, I didn't take anything valuable. I just made myself comfortable. I hope you like the fire. It's very cozy, isn't it? I'll be back soon. I have some things to do in the woods. Don't try to run away or call for help. I'll know. And I won't like it. See you soon, friend. I felt a chill run down my spine as I read the note. I dropped the knife and ran out of the cabin. I got in my car, started the engine and drove away from there. I wanted to go camping, but I never had the chance. So when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental in Yosemite National Park, I decided to book it for a weekend. It was a solo trip, just me and nature. I thought it would be fun and relaxing. The cabin was located in a secluded area, surrounded by trees and mountains. It was small and cozy, with a fireplace, a kitchen, and a bedroom. It had no electricity or phone service, but I didn't mind. I wanted to disconnect from the world for a while. I arrived on Friday afternoon and unpacked my stuff. I made a fire, cooked some dinner, and read a book. It was peaceful and quiet. I felt happy and free. The next day, I woke up early and went for a hike. The scenery was breathtaking. I saw deer, squirrels, and birds. I took some pictures and enjoyed the fresh air. I returned to the cabin around noon and ate some sandwiches. I decided to take a nap, since I was tired from the walk. I don't know how long I slept, but when I woke up, it was dark outside. I checked my watch, and it was almost 10 p.m. I must have slept through the whole afternoon and evening. I felt a bit groggy, but I got up and stretched. I decided to make some coffee and watch the stars. I went to the kitchen and turned on the gas stove. I filled the kettle with water and put it on the burner. I waited for it to boil, and then I heard a loud bang. I jumped and looked around. It sounded like someone had slammed the door. I ran to the living room and saw that the front door was wide open. I felt a cold breeze, and a shiver ran down my spine. I grabbed a flashlight and walked towards the door. I looked outside and saw nothing but darkness. I called out, Hello? Is anyone there? But there was no answer. I felt a surge of fear and wondered who or what had opened the door. Maybe it was an animal, or a prankster, or a robber. I didn't know, but I didn't want to find out. I quickly closed the door and locked it. I also checked the windows and made sure they were shut. I tried to calm myself down and told myself that it was nothing. Maybe the wind had blown the door open, or maybe I had forgotten to close it properly. I decided to ignore it and go back to the kitchen. 
I walked to the kitchen and saw that the kettle was boiling. I turned off the stove and poured some water into a mug. I added some instant coffee and stirred it. I took a sip and felt the warmth in my throat. I felt a bit better and decided to go to the bedroom. I grabbed my book and headed to the bedroom. I opened the door and turned on the flashlight. I scanned the room and saw that everything was in order. I put the book and the mug on the nightstand and got into the bed. I pulled the blanket over me and turned off the flashlight. I closed my eyes and tried to sleep, but I couldn't. I was too tense and nervous. I kept thinking about the door and the noise and the possibility of someone or something lurking outside. I wished I had brought a weapon or a phone or a friend. I felt vulnerable and alone. I tossed and turned and listened to the sounds of the night. I heard the wind and the fire and the crickets. They were normal and soothing sounds, but they didn't help me relax. Then I heard something else. Something that made my blood run cold. It was a scream. A loud, piercing, human scream. It came from somewhere outside, and it lasted for a few seconds. Then it stopped, and there was silence. I froze and felt my heart pounding. I opened my eyes and looked at the window. It was pitch black, and I couldn't see anything. I wondered who had screamed, and why, and where. I wondered if they were okay, or if they were in trouble, or if they were dead. I felt a surge of panic, and wanted to get out of there. I wanted to run to my car, and drive away, and never come back. But I was too scared to move. I was afraid that if I got out of the bed, something would grab me, or attack me, or kill me. I stayed in the bed, and curled up into a ball. I covered my ears and closed my eyes. I prayed for the morning to come and for the nightmare to end. But it didn't. It got worse. I heard another scream. And another. And another. They were different voices, male and female, young and old. They sounded like they were in pain, or in fear, or in agony. They sounded like they were dying. I heard them coming from different directions and getting closer. I heard them getting louder and more desperate. I heard them begging and crying and cursing. I didn't know what was happening or why or how. I didn't know who was screaming or who was making them scream or what was making them scream. I didn't know if it was real or a dream or a hallucination. I only knew that I was terrified and that I wanted it to stop. But it didn't. It kept going. I heard the screams getting closer and closer, and closer. I heard them getting louder, and louder, and louder. I heard them getting right outside my door, and right outside my window, and right outside my head. I heard them screaming, and screaming, and screaming. And then I heard nothing. I opened my eyes, and saw the sun. It was shining through the window, and filling the room with light. It was morning, and it was quiet. I looked at the clock, and saw that it was 7 a.m. I had survived the night. I felt a wave of relief and a wave of confusion. I wondered what had happened and what had caused the screams and where they had gone. I wondered if it was over or if it would happen again. I decided to find out. I got out of the bed and put on my clothes. I grabbed my keys and my wallet and my phone. I left the book and the mug and the flashlight. I didn't care about them. I walked to the living room and saw that the fire was out. I walked to the kitchen and saw that the coffee was cold. I walked to the door and saw that it was locked. I unlocked the door and opened it. I stepped outside and looked around. There was a small pool of blood near the cabin, about ten feet away. It looked fresh and bright, and it contrasted with the green grass and the blue sky. It made me feel sick and scared. I wondered where it came from and who it belonged to. I wondered if it had anything to do with the screams and the blood on the cabin and the mystery of the night. I wondered if I was in danger or if I was safe. I didn't want to wonder anymore. I wanted to get out of there and forget everything. I wanted to go back to my normal life and pretend that none of this had ever happened. I ran to my car and got in. I started the engine and backed up. 
I turned around and drove away. I didn't look back and I didn't stop. I drove as fast as I could and as far as I could. I drove until I reached the nearest town. I wanted to go camping in the woods, so when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental in Yosemite National Park, I didn't hesitate to book it. It was a small, cozy cabin with a fireplace, a kitchen, and a bedroom. It was located in a secluded area, surrounded by tall pine trees and a clear stream. It sounded like the perfect getaway from the city life. I packed my car with some food, clothes, and camping gear, and drove for six hours to reach the cabin. The road was winding and bumpy, and I didn't see any other cars or signs of civilization. I checked the GPS on my phone, and it said I was close to the cabin. I turned off the main road and followed a dirt path that led me to the cabin. It looked exactly like the pictures on the website, except for one thing. There was a large, red X painted on the front door. I felt a chill run down my spine. What did that mean? Was it a warning? A prank? I got out of the car and approached the cabin. I tried the doorknob, and it was unlocked. I opened the door and stepped inside. The cabin was dark and dusty, and it smelled like mold and rot. I turned on the lights and saw that the cabin was in a state of disrepair. The furniture was broken, the walls were stained, and the floor was covered with trash and debris. It looked like no one had been here for years. I felt a surge of anger and disappointment. This was not what I paid for. This was a scam. I grabbed my phone and tried to call the rental company, but there was no signal. I cursed and threw my phone on the couch. I decided to leave the cabin and find another place to stay. I grabbed my keys and headed for the door, but as soon as I touched the handle, I heard a loud click. I tried to open the door, but it was locked. I pulled and pushed, but it wouldn't budge. I was trapped. I was alone and helpless in this hellhole. I heard a noise from the bedroom. It sounded like footsteps. Someone was in the cabin with me. I froze and listened. The footsteps were getting closer. I looked for a hiding place, but there was nowhere to go. I backed up against the wall and waited for the inevitable. The bedroom door opened and a figure emerged. It was a man wearing a dirty, torn shirt and jeans. He had long, greasy hair and a scruffy beard. His eyes were wild and bloodshot, and he had a wicked grin on his face. He was holding a large, rusty axe in his hand. He saw me and laughed. Well, well, well. Look who we have here. A little visitor. How nice of you to come. I've been waiting for you. He walked towards me, swinging his axe. I felt a surge of fear and adrenaline. I had to get out of here. I ran past him, dodging his axe. I reached the bedroom window and saw that it was slightly open. I pushed it with all my strength and it flew open. I jumped out of the window, landing on the hard ground. I felt a sharp pain in my ankle, but I ignored it. I got up and limped to my car, which was parked near the cabin. I unlocked the door and got in. I started the engine and drove away as fast as I could. I looked in the rearview mirror and saw him standing at the window, watching me. He raised his axe and threw it at my car. It smashed the back window of my car. I screamed and stepped on the gas, without looking back. I always wanted to go camping in Colorado, the best state of America for camping. I had heard so much about its natural beauty, rugged mountains, and breathtaking landscape. So when I found a cheap deal online for a solo cabin rental at High Plains Camping, I didn't hesitate to book it. The campsite was located in Oakley, a small town in the western part of the state. It had 70 RV sites, 12 cabins, and a few tent sites. It also had facilities like a pool, a playground, a laundry room, and a store. It seemed like a perfect place to relax and enjoy nature. I arrived at the campsite on a sunny afternoon in late September. The owner greeted me warmly and gave me the key to my cabin. He said it was one of the oldest cabins on the site, but it had been renovated recently and had all the amenities I needed. 
He also warned me that the nights could get cold and windy, so I should keep the windows and doors locked. I thanked him and drove to my cabin. It was a small wooden structure with a porch, a living room, a kitchen, a bedroom, and a bathroom. It looked cozy and comfortable. I unpacked my bags and decided to explore the campsite. I walked around and saw a few other campers, mostly families and couples. They smiled and waved at me as I passed by. I also saw some wildlife, like squirrels, rabbits, and birds. I felt a sense of peace and happiness. I returned to my cabin as the sun was setting. I made myself some dinner and watched some TV. I felt a bit lonely, but I reminded myself that this was a chance to reconnect with myself and nature. I decided to go to bed early and get some rest. I woke up in the middle of the night to a loud noise. It sounded like something was banging on the door. I jumped out of bed and grabbed a flashlight. I looked through the peephole and saw a dark figure outside. It was wearing a hooded cloak and holding a large axe. It was trying to break into my cabin. I felt a surge of fear and panic. I quickly locked the door and dialed 911, but there was no signal. I realized I was trapped and alone. I heard the door splintering and cracking. The figure was getting closer. I ran to the bathroom and locked myself in. I hoped that the door would hold long enough for someone to come and help me. I heard the figure enter the cabin. It was walking slowly and heavily. It was dragging the axe on the floor. It was looking for me. I heard it knock on the bedroom door. Then the living room door. Then the kitchen door. It was getting closer. I crouched in the corner of the bathroom and prayed. I hoped that it was a prank or a nightmare. I hoped that it would go away. I hoped that I would survive. I heard it knock on the bathroom door. It was here. I decided to make a run for it and open the door. I expected to see the hooded figure with the axe, but there was nothing there. The cabin was empty and silent. I felt a wave of relief and confusion. To this day, I still don't know if it was all my imagination or something else. I wanted to go camping in the wilderness, away from the noise and stress of the city. That's why I rented a cabin in the Yosemite National Park in California, one of the best states of America for nature lovers. The cabin was located in a secluded area surrounded by tall pine trees and a clear stream. It was cozy and rustic, with a fireplace, a kitchen, and a bedroom. I thought it was the perfect place to relax and enjoy the beauty of nature. I arrived at the cabin in the afternoon, after driving for several hours from San Francisco. I unpacked my car, lit a fire, and made some coffee. I decided to explore the area a bit, so I grabbed my camera and walked along the stream. The scenery was breathtaking, with snow-capped mountains, green meadows, and colorful wildflowers. I took some pictures and admired the view. I felt peaceful and happy. As the sun began to set, I headed back to the cabin. I cooked some dinner, read a book, and watched the stars. I felt sleepy and decided to go to bed. I locked the door, turned off the lights, and crawled into the warm bed. I fell asleep quickly, dreaming of the next day. I woke up in the middle of the night, feeling a cold breeze on my face. I'd opened my eyes and saw that the window was open. I wondered how that happened, since I was sure I closed it before going to bed. I got up and walked towards the window, intending to close it. As I approached, I saw something that made my blood run cold. There was a man standing outside the window, staring at me with a twisted smile. He was wearing a dirty coat, a hat, and a mask. He had a knife in his hand, dripping with blood. He looked like a serial killer from a horror movie. He raised his hand and tapped on the glass, making a chilling sound. I screamed and ran to the door, hoping to escape. But the door was locked, and the key was missing. I looked around, panicking, and saw that the key was on the table, next to a note. The note read, Hello, friend. I hope you enjoyed your stay. I've been watching you for a while. And I must say, you are very interesting. See you in a bit. I felt a surge of terror and disbelief. This was a nightmare. It had to be. How could this happen to me? Why me? 
Who was this man, and what did he want from me? I looked for a weapon, anything to defend myself, but there was nothing. I was trapped, alone, and helpless. I heard the door knob turn, and the door opened slowly. The man entered the cabin, still smiling. He walked towards me, holding the knife. I backed away, until I hit the wall. There was nowhere to go. He was right in front of me, ready to strike. He said, Goodbye, friend. It's been a pleasure. Don't worry, it will be over soon. Just close your eyes and let it happen. Trust me, it's for the best. He raised the knife and brought it down. I woke up, gasping for air. I was in my bed, in the cabin. It was morning, and the sun was shining. It was all a dream, a horrible, terrible dream. I was alive and safe. There was no killer, no note, no knife. It was all in my head, a product of my imagination. I sighed with relief and wiped the sweat from my forehead. I got up and went to the bathroom. I splashed some water on my face and looked in the mirror and saw something that made my heart stop. There was a red mark on my chest where the knife had stabbed me in my dream. This was really scary. I haven't experienced anything like that again. But I still wonder, how did I got that mark on my chest? I wanted to go camping in Colorado, the best state of America for camping. I had heard so much about the natural beauty, the rugged mountains, and the breathtaking landscape. So when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental near High Plains Camping, one of the top campgrounds in the state, I didn't hesitate to book it. I drove for hours from Denver, enjoying the scenic views along the way. I arrived at the campground in the late afternoon and checked in at the office. The friendly staff gave me a map and directions to my cabin, which was located at the edge of the property, surrounded by trees and hills. They also warned me about the wildlife in the area and advised me to keep my food and trash secure. I followed the dirt road to my cabin, which was a small wooden structure with a porch and a swing. It looked cozy and rustic, just what I had imagined. I unloaded my car and entered the cabin. It had a living room with a fireplace, a kitchenette, a bathroom, and a bedroom with a full bed and a bunk bed. It was simple but comfortable, and had everything I needed for a relaxing stay. I decided to explore the campground before it got dark. I put on my hiking boots and grabbed my backpack and headed out. The campground was spacious and well-maintained, with a variety of facilities and amenities. There were RV sites, tent sites, and cabins, as well as a playground, a pool, a laundry room, and a store. There were also trails that led to the nearby national forest, where I could enjoy more hiking and biking. I chose one of the trails and followed it into the woods. The air was fresh and crisp, and the sun was shining through the branches. I felt a surge of energy and excitement as I walked among the pine trees and wildflowers. I saw some squirrels and birds, but no other people. I felt like I had the whole forest to myself. I walked for about an hour until I reached a clearing with a stunning view of the mountains. I stopped and took some pictures and then sat down on a rock to rest and snack. I checked my phone and saw that I had no signal. I didn't mind, though. I was enjoying the solitude and the silence. I was about to get up and head back when I heard a rustling sound behind me. I turned around and saw a large black bear standing on its hind legs, about twenty feet away from me. It was staring at me with its dark eyes and sniffing the air. It must have smelled my food. I felt a surge of fear and panic as I remembered the staff's warning. I had read somewhere that you should never run from a bear, but try to scare it away by making noise and appearing bigger. I quickly grabbed my backpack and held it over my head and started yelling and waving my arms. I hoped the bear would get scared and leave, but it didn't. It lowered itself to all fours and started walking towards me, slowly and steadily. It looked angry and hungry and ready to attack. I realized that I had made a mistake. I had provoked the bear, instead of deterring it. I had no chance of fighting it off, or outrunning it. I was doomed. I dropped my backpack and ran, hoping to find a way out. 
I ran as fast as I could, dodging the trees and rocks. I heard the bear behind me, gaining on me. I felt its hot breath on my neck, and its claws on my back. I screamed and fell to the ground, feeling its teeth on my leg. I thought it was the end, but then I heard a gunshot. The bear let go of me and roared, and then collapsed on top of me. I felt its weight crushing me, and its blood soaking me. I tried to push it off, but I couldn't. I was trapped. I heard another gunshot, and then footsteps. I saw a man with a rifle, wearing a ranger's uniform. He came over and lifted the bear off me, and checked my pulse. He looked relieved and said, You're alive. You're lucky I was nearby. I heard your scream and came to help. You're badly injured, but you'll make it. I'll call for help and get you to a hospital. Don't worry, you'll be okay. He took out his radio and called for backup and an ambulance, and then stayed with me until they arrived. When the help arrived, they took me to the hospital, and I somehow survived. This was the closest I had ever come to dying. I wanted to go camping, but I never had the chance. So when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental in Yosemite National Park, I decided to book it for a weekend. It was a solo trip, just me and nature. I thought it would be fun and relaxing. The cabin was located in a secluded area, surrounded by trees and mountains. It was small and cozy, with a fireplace, a kitchen, and a bedroom. It had no electricity or phone service, but I didn't mind. I wanted to disconnect from the world for a while. I arrived on Friday afternoon and unpacked my stuff. I made a fire, cooked some dinner, and read a book. It was peaceful and quiet. I felt happy and free. The next day, I woke up early and went for a hike. The scenery was breathtaking. I saw deer, squirrels, and birds. I took some pictures and enjoyed the fresh air. I returned to the cabin around noon and ate some sandwiches. I decided to take a nap since I was tired from the walk. I don't know how long I slept, but when I woke up, it was dark outside. I checked my watch, and it was almost 10 p.m. I must have slept through the whole afternoon and evening. I felt a bit groggy, but I got up and stretched. I decided to make some coffee and watch the stars. I went to the kitchen and turned on the gas stove. I filled the kettle with water and put it on the burner. I waited for it to boil and then I heard a loud bang. I jumped and looked around. It sounded like someone had slammed the door. I ran to the living room and saw that the front door was wide open. I felt a cold breeze and a shiver ran down my spine. I grabbed a flashlight and walked towards the door. I looked outside and saw nothing but darkness. I called out, Hello? Is anyone there? But there was no answer. I felt a surge of fear and wondered who or what had opened the door. Maybe it was an animal, or a prankster, or a robber. I didn't know, but I didn't want to find out. I quickly closed the door and locked it. I also checked the windows and made sure they were shut. I tried to calm myself down and told myself that it was nothing. Maybe the wind had blown the door open, or maybe I had forgotten to close it properly. I decided to ignore it and go back to the kitchen. I walked to the kitchen and saw that the kettle was boiling. I turned off the stove and poured some water into a mug. I added some instant coffee and stirred it. I took a sip and felt the warmth in my throat. I felt a bit better and decided to go to the bedroom. I grabbed my book and headed to the bedroom. I opened the door and turned on the flashlight. I scanned the room and saw that everything was in order. I put the book and the mug on the nightstand and got into the bed. I pulled the blanket over me and turned off the flashlight. I closed my eyes and tried to sleep, but I couldn't. I was too tense and nervous. I kept thinking about the door and the noise and the possibility of someone or something lurking outside. I wish I had brought a weapon or a phone or a friend. I felt vulnerable and alone. I tossed and turned and listened to the sounds of the night. I heard the wind and the fire and the crickets. They were normal and soothing sounds, 
but they didn't help me relax. Then I heard something else. Something that made my blood run cold. It was a scream. A loud, piercing, human scream. It came from somewhere outside, and it lasted for a few seconds. Then it stopped, and there was silence. I froze, and felt my heart pounding. I opened my eyes, and looked at the window. It was pitch black, and I couldn't see anything. I wondered who had screamed, and why, and where. I wondered if they were okay, or if they were in trouble, or if they were dead. I felt a surge of panic, and wanted to get out of there. I wanted to run to my car, and drive away, and never come back. But I was too scared to move. I was afraid that if I got out of the bed, something would grab me, or attack me, or kill me. I stayed in the bed, and curled up into a ball. I covered my ears, and closed my eyes. I prayed for the morning to come, and for the nightmare to end. But it didn't. It got worse. I heard another scream. And another. And another. They were different voices, male and female, young and old. They sounded like they were in pain, or in fear, or in agony. They sounded like they were dying. I heard them coming from different directions, and getting closer. I heard them getting louder, and more desperate. I heard them begging, and crying, and cursing. I didn't know what was happening, or why, or how. I didn't know who was screaming, or who was making them scream, or what was making them scream. I didn't know if it was real, or a dream, or a hallucination. I only knew that I was terrified, and that I wanted it to stop. But it didn't. It kept going. I heard the screams getting closer, and closer, and closer. I heard them getting louder, and louder, and louder. I heard them getting right outside my door, and right outside my window, and right outside my head. I heard them screaming, and screaming, and screaming. And then I heard nothing. I opened my eyes, and saw the sun. It was shining through the window, and filling the room with light. It was morning, and it was quiet. I looked at the clock, and saw that it was 7 a.m. I had survived the night. I felt a wave of relief, and a wave of confusion. I wondered what had happened, and what had caused the screams, and where they had gone. I wondered if it was over, or if it would happen again. I decided to find out. I got out of the bed, and put on my clothes. I grabbed my keys, and my wallet, and my phone. I left the book, and the mug, and the flashlight. I didn't care about them. I walked to the living room, and saw that the fire was out. I walked to the kitchen, and saw that the coffee was cold. I walked to the door, and saw that it was locked. I unlocked the door, and opened it. I stepped outside, and looked around. There was a small pool of blood near the cabin, about ten feet away. It looked fresh and bright, and it contrasted with the green grass and the blue sky. It made me feel sick and scared. I wondered where it came from, and who it belonged to. I wondered if it had anything to do with the screams, and the blood on the cabin, and the mystery of the night. I wondered if I was in danger, or if I was safe. I didn't want to wonder anymore. I wanted to get out of there, and forget everything. I wanted to go back to my normal life, and pretend that none of this had ever happened. I ran to my car, and got in. I started the engine, and backed up. I turned around, and drove away. I didn't look back, and I didn't stop. I drove as fast as I could, and as far as I could. I drove until I reached the nearest town, 